Hi everyone. Now we are going to discuss about antiviral agents or antiviral drugs. So we are having so many types of antiviral agents or antiviral drugs. Basically, we will discuss uh, only two types. One is interferons and another one is a base analogs. So first of all, see what is an antiviral agent or antiviral drugs. The chemical substance or the drugs used for the treatment of viral diseases are called antiviral agents or antiviral drugs. So uh, basically this uh, using of antiviral agents or antiviral drugs was of uh, myth that a drug that would block viral reproduction was also thought to be toxic for the host. So this was assumed and it is also correct because it's the thing that is happening. But in recent years, the extensive researchers carried out in different laboratories all over the world and they have bought out some effective antiviral agents which will affect only the viruses but not the host cell. Among such uh, successful antiviral agents are interferons and the base analogs. In this part, we will discuss about these interferons in detail and in the next part we will discuss about the base analogs. Let's begin with the interferons. Interferons. Interferons are produced by human and animal cells in minute quantities mainly to viral infections and help in eliminating such viral infections. Okay, And these interferons are going to uh, appear as a body's first line of defense against the viral infection and these are all going to be considered as non-specific resistant factor. Why we are considering it as a non-resistant factor means it does not exhibit the specificity towards a particular virus. That is an interferon produced in response to one virus is also effective in eliminating the infection caused by another virus. So that is why we are not going to be prone with many viral infections because of this non-specific resistance factor. And the word interferon was first coined by Isaac and Lindman in the year 1957 while they were working with influenza virus. They observed the chick embryo that is chick embryonic membrane fragments treated with live or inactivated influenza virus produced a diffusible antiviral substances and those antiviral substances render the cells resistant to virus infection that's how they named those antiviral substances as interferons okay so later on many workers found that interferon production is a natural defense mechanism possessed by all vertebrate cells against the viral infections and interferons are as i told you or small proteins first isolated from virus infector or chemically activated fibroblast and the leukocytes these interferons has antiviral action inhibits cell proliferation modulates the immune response by activation uh, that is activating the natural killer cells and even they activate the macrophages and some may activate or enhance it by combining with uh, AFN that is interferon alpha beta or gamma and very few particular uh, particles of virus are sufficient to induce a cell for the production of interferon that means no need of the whole virus very few particles of virus may also be sufficient to have the production of interferons let's see some of the characters of interferons that they possess the first one interferons or chemically proteins that's the definition of it that we discussed produced by viral infected cells or sometimes by non-viral inducers too Interferons by itself has no direct action on viruses but it acts on other cells of the same species rendering them immune to virus infections. That means they selectively inhibit the viral mRNA translation without affecting the cellular mRNA. Then interferons are species specific. That means 
the interferons produced by one virus can protect only the cells of the same or related species against the viral infections but not cells of unrelated species example uh, human interferons can affect you in human cells only but not in the others then the activity of human uh, interferons is not virus specific what does it means interferons induced by one virus can counter attack or can protect against the infection caused by the same or unrelated viruses so that's how causing the uh, non specific in nature then viruses vary in their capacity to induce interferon what does it means the virulent viruses are going to be the poor inducers of interferons whereas the avirulent viruses are good inducers of interferon production similarly rna viruses are better inducers than the dna viruses so these are all the some of the characters of interferons or common features of interferons then coming to the types of interferons there are two types of interferons based on the receptor binding we are going to have two types and based on the cell origin we have the three types let's see the first one types based on the receptor binding there are two types of interferons one is type 1 interferon then second one is the type 2 interferon the type 1 interferons consists of seven classes how many classes seven classes are there interferon alpha beta then epsilon kappa type omega type delta and the psi type out of all these things serologically alpha and beta are going to be distinguished as type 1 and the alpha interferons are going to be produced by leukocytes and the beta are going to be by the fibroblast cells and these two alpha interferon and beta interferons are going to be encoded by the chromosome number 9 though they are having the different binding affinities but similar biological effects will be shown by both alpha and beta and the type 1 interferons are the largest group of interferons and they are secreted by almost all cell types okay then coming to the second one type 2 interferon consists of only one class that is interferon gamma which is also called as immune interferon and this is going to be produced by certain activated t cells and as well as the natural killer cells and it is made that is interferon gamma is made in response to antigen that is including the viral antigens or mitogen stimulation of lymphocytes so these are all the things based on the receptor binding then moving to the based on cell of origin or antigenic characters and other properties the interferons are classified into three types how many types three types that is interferon alpha which is also known as leukocyte interferon is produced by leukocytes then second type is beta interferons or interferon beta which are also called as fibroblast interferons so here the fibroblast is not there fibroblast interferon is produced by fibroblast then moving to the third type gamma interferons also known as immune interferon which are produced by t lymphocytes and even by some natural killer cells on stimulation by the antigens so that's how based on the cell origin we have the three types based on the receptor binding we have the two types then coming to the mechanism of enzyme action which is a little bit interesting factor about this one okay so interferons as we know these are the small proteins uh, mainly released by some of the macrophages lymphocytes and tissue cell infected with the virus so here what is happening is that uh, when a virus enters into the cell that means the host cell in response to viral attack no direct effect of the virus rather than they induce an antiviral state in the neighboring healthy host cells that prevents the viral replication in these cells that means the double stranded rna virus are the most potent inducers of interferons so i told you while telling the characters that the rnas are going to be the good inducers rather than the dna so when a virus attacks the host cell and releases its genome into the host cell cytoplasm the viral genome uh, interacts with the host genome and regulates the synthesis of uh, interferon at the level of transcription 
Now the interferon genes are turned on and the, uh, what, through the process of transcription, the mRNA was synthesized and from the mRNA you are going to have the synthesis of these interferons. Now the interferons so synthesized in the infected host cell are released and migrated to the neighboring unaffected host cell and when infected that is when interferons move to the neighboring uninfected host cells they bind to the specific receptor sites on the surface of these cells and stimulate them to produce certain antiviral proteins within them and it is considered that these antiviral proteins are translation inhibitory proteins and block the translation of mRNA molecules of the host cell and therefore the viral replication is ultimately blocked in such host cells. So this is a just brief of the how the mechanism of action is occurring. These interferons actually work in a complex manner and involves a series of molecular uh, events to create antiviral state in the host cell. Okay. So next moving to the clinical applications. Interferons alpha and beta have been used to treat various viral infections. Okay. So basically nowadays the interferon alpha is uh, used in the treatment of uh, hepatitis C and the hepatitis B. And the gamma interferon or uh, immune interferon is going to be used in a treating of variety of diseases uh, mainly related with the macrophage activation like uh, leptomatous, leprosy, leishmaniasis, toxoplasmosis. Okay. Since interferons have anti-proliferative effects also, they have also been used in the treatment of certain tumors such as um, melanoma and capsiosis sarcoma. So now uh, this human interferons are produced in unlimited quantities through cloning in bacteria and the viruses. That means the production of these uh, uh, interferons are being done with of uh, these cloning in bacteria and viruses rather than the normal industrial production. So interferons uh, based drugs are uh, now being used in again as the certain diseases I told you like upper respiratory then uh, herpetic keratitis, genital warts, then HBV that is hepatitis virus and HBC, hepatitis C virus. And as I told you these are also being used as anti-cancer agents particularly in the lymphomas. Okay? And further they may also be used as a immunomodulators. So what do you mean by immunomodulators means which will uh, balance our immune uh, system productions. Okay. Then coming to the side effects, we will have some side effects or frequent with the interferons administration and are usually dose limiting. So such as influenza like symptoms commonly occur but these uh, symptoms usually become less severe with the repeated treatments of interferons. And the common side effects that we will get because of these interferons administration are fever, malice, fatigue, muscle pains, all these things and high levels of uh, interferons can also cause kidney, liver, bone marrow and heart toxicity. Okay, So this is all about the antiviral drug, uh, one of the antiviral drug or agent that is interferon. So we had gone through the introduction to the interferons and the discovery, then the characteristics, then the types of interferons and the mechanism of action of interferons, then clinical applications and the side effects. So we will discuss the base analog, the second type of antiviral agent or antiviral drug in the next part. Thank you.